Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So for today, we're going to continue with our session for ARD in a bar exam. And today's topic is on present scenario of agriculture. So for this topic, I've chosen a few of the questions. So we'll be solving those questions, all right? And before going further, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also you can press the bell icon for further notifications. And if you have liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well. Right, so let's start with our first question. Our first question says, which of the following countries is the leading producer in papaya? Okay, so the options given here are A, China, B, India, C is Brazil, uh, D is Nigeria, and E is Indonesia, okay? So the right answer for this, guys, is India. So India is the first, um, is the leading state in the production of papaya. Not only that, this India, it's also the first uh, in bananas, uh, in mangoes and papayas as well, okay? So during this uh, data of which they conducted on 2018 to 2019, all right? So 31.74 million tons of banana was produced, around 35.98 million tons of papaya, and 20.79 million tons of mango was produced in the country, okay? So uh, it's uh, other than that, India is also the largest buffalo India has also the largest buffalo population, which makes about 108.7 million, okay? Further, this India is also the largest producer in pulses, which makes about uh, 26.13 million tons, which is the target for 2019 and 20. Okay, so uh, some of the things where India is also the leading producers are in the produce, uh, production of spices, pulses, milk, tea, cashew, uh, jute, and it is also the second largest producer of wheat and rice, fruits, vegetables, right? And sugarcane, cotton, and oil seeds. So remember, uh, there's also one thing that okra, which is also known as the latest finger or bindi in Hindi, right? So this um, India is also the largest producer of okra, okay? So these are something on uh, the production of India and now let's move on to our second question. So in our second question says which of the following is the highest vegetable producing country in the world? So uh, the options given are uh, India, we have USA, C is Philippines, D is China and E is Mexico. So the right answer for this is China, okay? So the amounts of vegetables, India, remember they rank second in the world, okay? So which makes about 185.88. So remember this, this data is from 2018-2019 data that they have conducted, okay? So there are also new one which came up recently on the second advanced estimate. So we'll be talking about that data later on. So before that, see, uh, we've also said that it is also the producer of spice, pulses, milk, tea, cashew, and jute, right? But it is second, remember, it is second in vegetables right uh, in wheat rice fruits sugarcane cotton and oil seeds okay remember this this is very important it can also come in the exams all right high chances of coming in the exam now number question number three is according to the department of agriculture corporation and farmers welfare's third advanced estimate of production of major crops for 2019 to 20 okay so this is recently so the total food grain production in in country is estimated to achieve a record of uh, the options given are 282 um, million tons, 295 million tons, 301 million tons. Number D says 268 million tons. Number E says 412 million tons. Okay, so let's check the answer, guys. The answer is 295 million tons. Okay. So this, according to this department, which they have conducted of the third advanced estimate of this food grains production, okay? So they achieved the highest record of all time, okay? The highest record of all time, which makes about 295.67 million tons, which was in for the year of 2019 and 2020. So, so this has uh, estimated to achieve the highest for the fourth consecutive consecutive years since 2016 to 27 year all right so this is the uh, actual data for the total production in the food grains this is very uh, this is very a uh, very important question so try to remember this and try to mark it up and if we don't have a um, 
notepad beside you try to bring uh, try to take a notepad and jot down these important questions and these points that i'm saying right now okay so let's go to our fourth question our fourth question here is total rice production right so during this 2019 to 20 it is estimated at a record of 117.94 so it means that the production was 117.94 in rice okay the estimated ones and which which this record it was found to be higher right by how much how much percentage as compared to the five years average which is of 109.77 million tons okay so the there was an increase right so by how much percent was how much uh, increase can it can be seen during this uh, five year consecutive right so this wasn't given in million tons so let us understand number a which is in 101.6 million tons increase in 1.6 or number b says 8.1 million tons number c says 6.4 million tons number d says 3 million tons number e says 15 million tons so the answer for this is 8.1 million tons there was an increase about 8.1 million tons in the production and rise if we compare to the five years consecutive years okay so this this is the data from the third advanced estimate okay so the total rice production during 2019 to 20 is estimated to record of about 117.94 we can say it about 118 as well okay a rough estimate so there was a higher by about 8.17 million tons and which was uh, as compared to this five years average production of about 109.77 million tons so this is also very important so as you go uh, you're getting the pattern of the questions right so as you study try to study the uh, production and try to compare it to the previous years as well okay questions can also come as that way you can also go for uh, go for questions from uh, rice wheat sugarcane uh, cotton oil seeds and all of that which includes in the uh, food grains as well try to study in that manner okay so number fifth question says, what is the total oil seed production for 2019-2020 according to the third advanced estimate, which was given by the uh, Agriculture Corporation and Farmers Welfare, right? So the options given here are 49.1 million ton. Number B says 23.5 million ton. Number C is 12.7 million ton. Number D is 37.8 eight million tons and number c is none of the above so guys the right answer for this is 33.5 million ton okay so this oil seed production the total production was estimated to be around 33.50 million tons okay so this one was higher by 1.98 million tons when we compare it to the 31. million tons which is produced in the year of 29 18 to 20 19 okay so in addition the production of the oil seeds during uh, 2019 this uh, this year was higher by 4.10 million tons than the average oil seed production so you can see that there was an increase and if we actually compare it by the previous year then there was an increase about 1.98 million tons but then when you compare it to this average oil seed production which has been going on then there was an increase about 4.10 million tons okay so i hope this is clear now uh, let's move on to our another question which is question number six right so the total production of pulses during 2019 to 2018 is estimated to be 2.19 million tons right which is higher than the five years average production so what is the total production for this um 2019 to 2024 pulses okay so the options here are given are guys 30 million tons number b says 23 million tons number c is 50 million tons number d is 15 million tons and number e is 19 million tons so the right answer is 23 million tons okay so remember and the uh, uh, the pulses the production is about 20 estimated to be 23.01 million tons so this one was higher than the average five years uh, production of about 20.82 million tons so how much was the uh, how much uh, how much was the increase there was an increase about but 2.19 million tons okay remember that 
So this is according to the third estimate, advanced estimate of production for the major crops, right? Of um, the food range production. So these are some of the questions on the third estimate. And now let's go to furthermore. So which of the following states from these have the highest uh, milk, produ milk production, okay? So the options given here are Andhra Pradesh, we have Haryana, we have Uttar Pradesh, uh, we have west bengal and we have gujarat okay so the right answer for this the top producing state is uttar pradesh okay so remember so the top i've given here the top five uh, milk producing states in india the first one is uttar pradesh which accounts for about 16.3 percent okay and then which is followed by rajasthan which is about 12.6 percentage and we move forward towards madhya pradesh which uh, were about 8.5 so the number one is Uttar Pradesh, second is Rajasthan, third is Madhya Pradesh, and we have Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat as well. Okay, so these states, these five states, they contribute to about 53.1 percent of total milk production in the country. So, which makes about half of the milk production in the country comes from this following five states which is Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat okay so remember the top producing state is Uttar Pradesh and it accounts for about half which is about more than half which is about 53.1 uh, percentage of the total milk production in the country okay so now let's go to, uh, uh, forward with, uh, with another question, which is according to this basic animal husbandry statistics of 2019. So they have released every year, they release the statistics uh, on animal husbandry and dairying as well, right? So uh, according to this statistics of 2019, how much increase was seen in the milk production as we compare it to the previous year? Okay, so the options given here are 20 percentage, the B is 6.5 percentage, C is um, 2.7 percentage, D is 11, and E is none of the above. Okay, so the right answer, guys, for this is uh, 6.5 percentage. Okay, there was an increase of about 6 point percentage when we compare it to the previous year. And now let's look into the milk production. Uh, this data I've given on some of the milk production. This milk production is um, we, is collected in the data of, is presented in the data of million tons, okay? So the total milk production in the country was about 18.187.75 uh, million tons, okay? So there was an increase of about 6.5 uh, percentage uh, there was an increase in the exotic cost breed cattle of about 8.7 right and indigenous cattle gets about 5.7 percentage and buffalo contributes about 6.4 percentage okay to the total milk production so these are some of the data and facts on the milk production uh, according to the uh, statistics given by the animal husbandry for 2019 okay and now moving on to our eighth question, which states this is also on the basis of animal husbandry statistics, okay? So uh, state which of the following is true on egg production, okay? So first one here is West Bengal is the highest egg producing state. Number second says there was an decrease in the egg production as compared to the previous year. And number three says the total uh, production was 103 billion number, okay? So the right answer, guys, for this is three only, which is uh, the total egg production was 103, which means that the first two is a wrong answer. Now let us look more into it. Uh, so the egg production, the total production is about 103 billion numbers, okay, egg production. And commercial poultry gives about 84.91. All right, and backyard poultry give, uh, gave about 18.41 billion numbers. So commercial poultry will be giving 82.2 percentage, whereas backyard poultry will be given about 17.8 percentage only. Okay, so uh, remember there was an increase of about 8.5 percentage when we compare it to the previous year. Okay, so this is also important, and the uh, and the. Um, data on this commercial as well as the egg poultry is also important as well as the production total production of eggs is also important so now let us look into the top five egg producing states in the country the first one is andhra pradesh okay guys second is tamil nadu third is west bengal uh, telangana fourth is west bengal 
Uh, fifth is Haryana, and the total contribution given by this five state is about 65% to the total production and the egg production. Okay, Andhra Pradesh, which will account for about, they are all marginal if you see from Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Okay, so Andhra Pradesh gives about 19.1% and Tamil Nadu gives about 18.2%. Okay, so these are the five uh, egg producing states. Top five egg producing states, the total production of eggs is 103 billion numbers okay so and there was an increase in about 8.5 percentage if we compare it to the previous years now let us go to our ninth question which of the following state is the highest food producing state in the country okay this is very an easy question but uh, there are chances of getting confused in this question as well okay so now let us look into the uh, options the first option given here is on jammu and kashmir Number B is Gujarat, number C is Telangana, number D is Rajasthan, and number E is Karnataka. So the right answer is Rajasthan. Rajasthan is the top wool producing state in the country as well. Okay, so you might get confused with Jammu and Kashmir as well. So, but the top one, number one is Rajasthan. In second place comes Jammu and Kashmir, okay? So let's look into the top five wool producing states. The first is Rajasthan, second is Jammu and Kashmir, third Telangana, uh, number fourth is Karnataka and number fifth is Gujarat, okay? So these are the top five world producing states in the country. Now let us look into the world production again. This question is also on world production. But as compared to the previous year, according to the animal husbandry statistics of 2019, so there was a decline in the world production was seen in the uh, World production, okay. The decline was seen in the world production. So, how much was the decline? All right. So, the first one option here is four percent. Number B is two point five percent. Number C is seven percent. Number D is three point seven percent. Number E is twelve point three percent. Okay. So, the answer for this is two point five percent. So, there was a decline of about two point five percent. Now let us look into the world production now. Uh, the total world production in the country is about 40.14 million kgs. Okay, remember, don't get mixed with tons. We've been going on with tons. So there was a decline by about 2.5 compared to the percentage when we compared to the previous years. So uh, for this, try to remember these two points, which is 40.40 mil 40 million kg as well as the decline. How much was the decline? Okay. So this is important, right? And now let's go to another question, which says how much increase in livestock population was seen according to the 20th livestock census when we compare it to the uh, 19th livestock census, right? So the Options given here are 5.6, number B is 8, percentage number C is 4.6, and number D is 2.7, and number E is none of the above. So the right answer is 4.6, okay? So according to the 20th livestock census, uh, there I've given some data, uh, there was uh, the total livestock population in India was about 535. This is very important. This data is very important, okay? And so they should increase of about 4.6 percentage over the lives of census, which was conducted in the year 2012, okay? So here in this table, if you move forward, I, I have given some of the um, highest gainers as, as well as uh, the, the decrease in this life production. So there was an increase in West Bengal, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, and these are the top three states. And the highest decrease was seen in Rajasthan, UP, and Gujarat. Okay, so uh, there was an increase of about 23.32 in West Bengal. Telangana showed about an increase of about 22.29. And Andhra Pradesh showed about 15.76, okay. And uh, the decrease, if you move here, Rajasthan, they showed about 1.66 and UP, 1.3635 and Gujarat showed about 0 0.95 decrease if we compare it to the uh, previous 19 uh, livestock census which was conducted in the year 2012, okay? So this is also very important question, so I'll try to remember this. Uh, another question, question number 12, which says, according to the Handbook of Fisheries Statistics, which was conducted in 2018. So this was the latest data that I could get. Uh, they haven't conducted, um, they haven't given out the statistics on fisheries for 2019. So this is 2018 statistics was the high, 
latest one, okay? So a state which of the following is true? Number one says India is currently the world's second largest producer of fish. Number two says the total fish production of 12.59 million metric uh, ton was registered during the year of 2017 to 2018. And number third is India is a top country in aquatic production. So the options here are one only, number B says one and two only, number C says two and three only, number D says one and three only, and number E says above all. Okay, so the right answer is one and two only, which says about India is the second largest producer of fish. Okay, and the total production was about 12.5 million metric tons. Um, million tons. Uh, but number third the statement is wrong as India is the second top country in aquaculture production as well. Okay, so now let us look into the details of it. So the total production is about 12.59, right? And there with a contribution of about 8.90 million metric tons from the land sector and 3.69 million tons from the marine sector, okay? So India is currently the second largest producer of fish, okay? Not the first, second largest. It is also the world's number two in agriculture, in aquaculture production as well as in the inland capture fisheries. Remember on the fisheries is also aquaculture, right? And as well as inland capture fisheries. So aquaculture is mostly related to the marine uh, fisheries, okay? And inland, if you're gonna uh, to be more precise, it is mostly in the um, riverside, right? So uh, these are the riversides or the ponds, right? So these are some of the data on the fish, uh, fish production, okay? So it is second in aquaculture and second in the uh, producing uh, producer of fishes as well, okay? So these are some of the data on this fish production. And now let's go to our number. Uh, now the question which says, which of the following states is the highest producer of inland fish, right? So I've explained what an inland fish is. Uh, the options given here are Tamil Nadu, number B is Kerala, number C is Andhra Pradesh, number D is West Bengal, and number E is none of the above. The right answer for this is Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is the top uh, inland fish producing state in the country, okay? So it has recorded the highest production of inland fish, which is about 34.50 lakh tons, okay? Whereas this Gujarat is, it is the leading state in the marine fish, okay? Which is about 7.01 lakh tons in the country, okay? Now let's go to another question which says the total agriculture exports account for about how much of the total agriculture trade. So they are asking about how much export does the total agriculture hold out of the total world agriculture trade, okay? So the options given here are about 20%, number B says 5%, number C is 10%, number D says 2%, and number E says 35%. So the right answer for this is 2%. So India is all, it occupies a more leading position in global trade in relation to the agriculture products, okay? So the uh, agriculture exports from India, they reach about a uh, US dollar of about 38.54 billion in the financial year of 2019, right? And US 28.93 dollar billion uh, in the year, uh, in the financial year of 2020 till January 2020. Okay. So the total world exports will account for about 22% of the total world agriculture trade, which was estimated to be about uh, 1.37 trillion US dollars. Okay, so this is an important. Try to remember this. Okay. So another question says, which of the following agriculture commodity has the highest export potential in India? So this says that which one has the highest export potential or which one is exported highest from India, okay? So the right, uh, the correct options here are basmati rice, number B is meat, number C is spices, number D says oil, number E is sugar. So the right answer for this is basmati rice. So this uh, basmati rice was the, has the highest export potential or is this export the highest, okay? So this, the among all the agriculture production commodities, Basmati rice, it was followed by buffalo meat, spices, oil, meat, sugar, cotton, and castor oil. They have been leading export commodities, okay? And if you look into this uh, pie chart out here, these apeda products, which includes all the uh, horticultural uh, products, right? So they account for about 48.6%. And then we move to the marine production, which accounts for about 18.8%, okay? And we have, after this, we have 
coffee, tea, oil, meats and spices and other products. So the highest is uh, under the beta products, okay, which is about 48, 48.6%. So this aggregate for basket, this is from the data of, given by the beta for 2018 and 19, okay? So remember this and let's move on to another question. The irrigated area accounts for how much percentage out of the 140 million hectares of the agricultural land in the India. So it means that out of these uh, 140 million hectares of agricultural land in India, how much uh, percentage of the land is under irrigated area, okay? So the options given here are 48%, number B says 66%, number C is 30%, number D 82%, number E is 54%. The right answer is 48%, okay? So about 80% of the current water is used for agriculture, okay, in India. So this irrigated area, they count for nearly of about 48.8%, almost 50, uh, 49% out of the total uh, um, hectare agriculture land, which is about 140 million hectares, right, in India. And the remaining 51.2% is wind fed, which means that there is no irrigation facilities, the, the, uh, the agriculture uh, production is carried out by wind, uh, carried out um, the water, the source of uh, water or the irrigation is through rainfall, okay, 51%. Uh, but the irrigated area is only about 48.8%. So half of the uh, agricultural land is under wind fed and uh, a little less than a half is under irrigated area, okay? So this is something about irrigation. And now let's go to another question which says, state which of the following is true on interest subvention on working capital loans for dairy sector, okay? So number one statement says it was done to offset the economic impact of COVID-19 on the dairy sector. So this Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying has introduced it for supporting dairy cooperatives and farmer producer organizations engaged in dairy activities. Now the one here is number second says to enable the producer owned institution to make timely payment of milk bill to milk producers. Number three it says the scheme it will be implemented through the National Dairy Development Board which is also known as NDDP, okay? So the options given here are one only, number B is two and three only, number C is three only, number D says uh, all of the above, and number E says none of the above. The right answer is all of the above. It means that all of these statements are true, okay? And now let us look into more detail of it, okay? So this Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, they introduced a scheme called as Intervention, when as interest subvention on working capital loans on the dairy sector on 14th May 2020. So this is new, right? So this modified scheme uh, it, uh, <clears throat> provides um, budgetary, it gives a, pro a budgetary provision of about 100 crore and marks for the component, okay? So during the year of, for the year of 2020 to 2021. So it has the following benefits under this, right? So number one is it will help providing stable market access to milk producers. Number second here, if you look down here, is enable the producer-owned institution to make timely payments of milk bill to the milk producers. Number third here is it will help producer-owned institutions in supplying the quality milk and milk products to consumers at a reasonable price, okay? And it will also help in stabilizing the domestic market price of conserved this, uh, dairy commodities and other milk products as well. Now the last one here is that it will also help or it will help in the increase, consistent increase in farmers' income and dairy even from the flush seasons making the dairy operations viable for the milk producers. So these are some of the information on the uh, interest subvention on working capital loans for the dairy sector which was introduced in uh, 14th May of this year, okay? So try to remember the benefits that uh, who will be the one who will be getting the benefits and the details of these uh, uh, of this of this scheme as well, okay, and try to remember the budgetary uh, budgetary provisions as well, which is about rupees hundred crore, okay. So these are the things that you need to remember. And now let's go to another question, which says, according to the economy of agriculture and light activities, what is the current GVA in twenty nineteen to twenty twenty? Okay, 
This is a very important question, but this is a very common question as well. So I think all of you guys will be knowing the answer for this. The options given here are 18.2. Uh, number B is 20.2 percentage, number C is 16.2, number D is 19 uh, percentage, and number E C is 12.6. The right answer to this is 16.5, right? So this GV is also known as the gross value added, okay? So the contribution of GV8, it was, uh, there was a decrease in the GV8. Okay, by from the if you see the contribution from the agriculture and the allied sectors from in 2014 2015 it was uh, about 18.2 percentage okay and we dropped down to 16.5 percentage in the year of 2019 to 20. So this decline, what could be the reason? The decline was mainly due to the decrease in the share of GVA of crops from 11.2 percentage in 2014 to 15 to 10 percentage in the 2017 to the share, this share, it has been declining on account of the relatively higher growth performance of the non-cultural sectors. Okay, so these are, this is a very important question. So you have to remember the GVA um, contributed by the agriculture and the allied sectors as well. Okay, so uh, another question here is, state which of the following is incorrect on the micro food enterprises, which is also known as FSPs, okay? So the uh, statement one says, uh, 10,000 core scheme, it was promoting vocals for local with global outreach. It will, it will be launched to help uh, to like macro food enterprises. Okay, now the statement says the focus will be on the women and the SCST owned units. And in the aspirational districts, as well as in the cluster based approach, will be followed in this. Okay, so another one here is the scheme will also focus on increasing health and safety benchmarks as well. The, um, the, uh, the options given here are number one, uh, A is one only, number B says one and two only, number C says two and three only, number D says all of the above, and number E says none of the above. The right answer is none of the above, okay? So the, um, let me tell you, so the non, all of these statements from here, these are all correct, okay? So we have to choose incorrect, but these statements are all correct. So the option here, none of the above, is the right answer. Okay. Now let us look into this uh, micro food enterprises more in detail. So the uh, ten thousand crore scheme it was promoting this vocal for uh, vocal for local with global outreach was launched to help the two lakh micro food enterprise. Okay, who will be needing the technical upgradation to obtain food safety and standards authority of India food standards. So they will also to build the brands and also marketing okay so the existing micro food enterprises farmer producer organizations uh, self-help groups and cooperatives will also be supported through this okay so the focus is mainly on the SCST women right and uh, sorry it will be focused on the women as well as the SCST units and those in the aspiration, uh, aspirational districts and cluster based approach will be followed and this uh, for example like a uh, mango in Uttar Pradesh, toma tomato in Karnataka, chili in Andhra Pradesh, orange in Malaysia, now this in this way this cluster based approach and um, in the districts uh, will also be followed through this micro food enterprise okay Right, so another question here is the scheme of Pradhan Mantri of Matsya Sampada Yojana, which is also known as the PMMSY, will be established under which of the following departments. So number A says Department of Food Processing Industries, number B is Department of Fisheries, right? Uh, number C says Department of Horticulture, number D is Department of Civil Aviation, number E is none of the above. The right answer for this is Department of Fisheries, okay? Now let us look into this. So this was under, this will be promoted under the Department of Fisheries to promote processing in the fishery sector and they'll be allocated an estimate of about rupees 3,737 crore rupees for the new recalls out Ministry of Fisheries and Husbandry and Dairy. Yeah. So it was established under the Department of Fisheries for robust fisheries management framework. Okay, so this is important, right? So try to remember the scheme as well and try to look more into detail about these schemes, okay? Another one here is that question number 21 says, recently the union minister has announced measures related to agriculture and allied sectors at the 
third branch of the uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, okay, a part of which was to promote the herbal production. What was the outlay, okay? How much was the outlay or the fund provided for, of the money spent for this uh, herbal production? <clears throat> So the options given here are number A, 5,000 crores, number B says 2,500 crores, number C is 4,000 crores, number D is 400 crores, and number E is 500 crores. The right answer for this is 4,000 crores. So uh, the third branch of these Atmar Nirbhar Bharat Abhyan Economic Stimulus Package, it was announced by the Union Finance Minister, right? So this to promote the herbal cultivation of labor of about 4,000 crores, okay? So this national medicinal plants board has supported about 2.2 lakh hectare area on the cultivation of medicinal plants. So about 10 lakh hectares will be covered under herbal cultivation in the next two years with the outlay of about rupees 4,000 crore, okay? And this will lead to about 5,000 crore income generation from the farmers. There will be a network of regional mandis for the medicinal plants. Uh, so, the, the the, so the National Medicinal Plant Board will bring about 800 hectare area by developing a corridor for the medicinal plants along the banks of Ganga. So these are these important points that you need to remember on the promotion of the herbal cultivation, okay? Now the question number 22 says, according to the third tranche of this uh, Manirbar uh, Bharat Abhiyan, select the correct statement. So the first one here is that the, the, the announced measure from a part of the 20th lakh crore economic stimulus package to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. Number second says financing facilities of at least one lakh crore will be provided for funding agriculture infrastructure projects at farm gate and aggregation points. Number three, statement three states rupees 500 crore will be promoted for implementing a scheme for introduction infrastructure development related to integrated beekeeping development centers, collection, marketing, as well as storage centers, and post harvest and value facilities, etc. Okay, so the Options given here are one, uh, number B says one and two only, number C is two and three, number D is all of the above, and number E is none of the above. The right answer is all of the above. So all these statements from here, these are all true, okay? Now let us look into this uh, <coughs> measures, okay, taken for this, all right? So the first one here is one lakh door, Agri infrastructure fund for farm gate infrastructure for farmers, right? So, and they will be given 10,000 crore scheme for formalization of micro food enterprise. Uh, number third is 20 crore for fishermen through the Pradhan Mantri, Matsya Sabara Yoshna. And number fourth is National Animal Disease Control Program for food and mouth disease and um, brucellosis will also be launched. And number fifth. <clears throat> Number six says on um, husbandry infrastructure development fund of 15,000 crore will be set up, okay? And there is also a motion of herbal cultivation with an outlay of 4,000 crore, right? So for B initiative, there is about 500 crore of rupees, okay? And operation greens will also be extended for tomatoes, potatoes, and onions, which is known as a top, and all fruit and to a vegetable which is also known as a total, right? So these, all these points, these are very important in terms of the measures which was given out by recently by the finance minister, right? So try to remember all these uh, outlays, right? And where the fun is going, right? So try to memorize and try to mark up and try to keep on revising this point again and again, okay? Because there are higher chances of these questions coming in the exam, right? Operation Greens is run by which of the following ministries, okay? Number question number, uh, the options A is Ministry of Food Processing Industries, number B is Ministry of Home Affairs, number C is Ministry of Forest and Environment, number D is Ministry of Tourism, number E is Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. The right answer for this is Ministry of Food Processing Industries, okay? So this Operation uh, Greens is run by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries and so there, this was also done under this uh, recent Pratma Nirbhar scheme, right? So this Operation Greens, it will be extended for tomatoes, onion, potatoes, and all fruits and vegetables, okay? So the subsidy provision for would, be, would provide 50% um, uh, 
a sub 50 percent subsidy on transportation for surplus to deficient markets 50 percent subsidy on storage including cold storage is also will be provided okay and the pilot mode is launched as a pilot for the next for the six months and will be extended and also it will be expanded okay so another one here is that the expected outcomes so the this will also lead to the better price realization to the farmers and they will also reduce wastages and they will also have an affordability of products for the consumers as well so these are some of the points on the operation greens right so remember 500 rupees core has been given for this operation greens okay Another one here, question number 24 says, state which of the following statement is true on Essential Commodities Act of 1995. So, uh, in measures for administrative and governance reforms under the third tranche of the uh, Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhyan, number second says, amendments will be done to Essential Commodities Act 1995 to enable better price realization for farmers. And this will also strengthen agri food processing linkages and enable demand drive value added agriculture. So, the options given here are one only, number B is one and two only, number uh, C is two and three only, number D says three only, number E is all of the above. So, the right answer is all of the above. So, some of the measurements, measures are that for administrative and governance reforms for this amendments to Essential Commodity Act of 1995 is that it is done to enable the better price realization for farmers, okay? And this, so this was under this Atma Nirbhar Abhiyan, right? So, this, under the amendments to, essential, uh, to the Essential Commodities Act, agricultural foodstuffs, including the cereals, the oils, uh, oil seed pulses, onions, and potato shall be deregulated, okay? Remember this point. And another one here is that stock limit will also be imposed under very exceptional circumstances like national calamities, famine, and surge in the prices as well. So another point here says no such stock limit shall apply to researchers or the value chain participant subject to their install capacity or to any exporters subject to the export demand. So these are the points that you need to remember on the uh, amendments to the Essential Commodity Act of 1995, which was the measures given for the administrative and govern governance reform under this Atma Nivar Bharat Abhiyan, okay? So another question, question number four, 20, sorry. Another question here is question number 25, right? So when was the agriculture produce and livestock marketing act adopted? Okay, so the options given here are 1991, number B is 2001, number C is 2017, number D is 2019, number E is 1968. So the right answer is uh, 2017, right? So here, the Agriculture Produce and Livestock Marketing Promotion and Facilitation Act of 2017 was enacted on April 2, 2017. So this was done in order to provide better market marketing facilities for the farmers okay remember that and the provision therein it will provide alternative marketing channels other than the apmc's right to the farmers in marketing they produce at competitive and remunerative prices so these are some of the things on the uh, agriculture produce and livestock marketing act right so Another question, number 26, says, based on the market research and information network scheme, select the incorrect statement. So we have to select the incorrect statement. So number one says it covers 5,000 wholesale Mondays across the country linked to the agri market portal. Number second says it is a sub-scheme of integrated scheme for agriculture marketing, ISAM, through the state marketing boards, APMCs, according to the state states and as well as the union territories so the objective of this is to facilitate for timely and quality uh, data reporting on the agriculture market net portal for the apmc markets of the country so the options given here are one only number b is two and three only number c is two only number d says all of the above and number b is none of the above the right answer for this is number uh, a which is one only this is the incorrect statement now let us look into answer okay so the government they implemented this market research and information network scheme covering about uh, 300 3,356 wholesale monies okay not 5,000 wholesale monies across the country linked to the AG market net 
Porto. So this wherein the agriculture produce market uh, committee's market will report the data on the Monday arrivals and prices of their traded agriculture commodities on the daily basis. Okay, so this implementation of this market research and information network, uh, it is a sub scheme of the integrated scheme for agricultural marketing. Okay, and it will be through the state marketing board or the agriculture produce marketing committees, which will which is spread across the states and the union territories. Now let us look into some of the objectives of these. Okay, so number one is that it is to facilitate a timely and quality data reporting on the Asian market portal from the APMC markets of the country. Number second here is monitoring and dissemination of the data in respect to Monday prices and arrival reported by the ABNC's markets on the AG market portal. Number third here is release of financial incentives to the data reporting uh, or the monitoring of the officials. And there will also be a development of the agriculture market atlas portal in the GIS platform as well. So this market atlas would also provide information in respect to the commodity with regard to major areas of market charges, market arrival, market movement, and as well as in the storage as well. So there will also be an updating of the market profiles by the by APMCs to make available functional information on various Mondays in the public domain as well. So they also have this undertaking market research studies, other useful studies and training programs. Um, they would also conduct farmer awareness programs at a market level and also they will pro uh, promote this marketing extension activities as well. So these are the, the main objectives of the market research and national network, okay? So try to remember the, the objectives, try to be clear what are the main objectives, who are they targeting, right? Okay. So in that way, try to study all these schemes as well. So our question number 27 says, according to the second advanced estimate in horticulture of 2019 to 20, what is the total of horticulture produced? So this is the latest estimate that was given by the horticulture department, which is a second advanced estimate, okay? So the options given here are 450 million tons. Number B says 320 million tons. Number C is 230 million tons. Number D is 378 million tons and number E is 310 million tons. The right answer for this is 320 million tons. Right so now let us look into the uh, total horticulture uh, production as well as in the area compared compared to the previous year. So the area in the previous year which is uh, 2018 to 2019 was uh, 25.43 million hectares right and for under the second advance estimate is about 25.66 okay and the production is from 310.74 million tons of million tons in the year 2018 to 2019 and for for the second advance estimate the production is about 320.48 million tons which which we could see that there was an increase in the production right so number question number 28 says according to the second advance estimate in the horticulture 2019 to 20 how much increase can be seen as compared to the data of 2018 to 2019 okay so the increase definitely we saw the increase right so how much was the increase the options given here are number a five percent number b says 3.1 percent number c is 7.3 percent number d is 1.2 percent number e says None of the above. The right answer is 3.1%. So there was an increase of about 3.1%. Right? So the total production, horticulture production in uh, 2019 to 20 second advance estimate is estimated to be 3.13 higher than that of the previous year. So there was an increase in vegetables, fruits, aromatic and medicinal plants and flowers, right? But there was a decrease in the production in plantation crops, spices, right? and over the previous years, right? So these are the two points that you need to remember under this question, okay? So uh, our question number 29 says, what is the total production of vegetable in India according to the latest report, which is the second advanced estimate, right? So number A is 200 million tons, number B is 191 million tons, number C is 300 million tons, number D is 97 million tons, and number E is 2. Uh, 45 million tons. The right answer is 191 million tons. The, the vegetable production in 2019 to 20 
the 20 is estimated to be 191.77 million tons when compared to the previous year which is about 183.0 million tons so you can see that there was an increase in the production of vegetables right so the area under this vegetable production is about 10 million hectares okay so these are some of the points on the vegetable production according to the second advanced estimate and the last question here is which of the following is the highest onion producing state right so the options given here are Karnataka, Haryana, Punjab, Maharashtra, and Madhya Pradesh. So guys, for this question, I would like you all to answer. Try to answer in the comment section and do comment everyone and let me know so that I'll be able to know whether you're knowing this fact or not, okay? And uh, before ending this thing, I have uh, I give a small summary. I give a small summary on the second advanced estimate, the key points to remember, okay? So we're just going to go through roughly through it, okay? So first is that the total of horticultural production in, uh, for the second advance estimate is estimated to be 3.13, higher than 2018 to 2019, okay? So we can see there was an increase in the uh, vegetable production, fruits, aromatics, uh, and medicinal plants as well, right? And flowers. So there was a decrease in plantation crops and spices. Remember this. And we also have the food production is estimated to be about 99.07 million tons when we compare to the 97. So there was an increase. The production in vegetable is estimated to be 191.77 million tons compared to last year, which was about 183.717 million tons. Right? And for the onion production is estimated to be 26 million tons compared to 22.8. 2 million tons if you compare to last year's, which was about from 2018 to 2019 data. And in tomato as well, the tomato production is estimated to be 20.57 million tons. Uh, there was an increase at about 8.2 percentage as compared to the 19.01 million tons for the year of 2018 to 29. Right, so these are some of the brief summary on the advanced estimates. Try to study more in detail, try to know what, uh, what are the production in various uh, branches of horticulture such as medicinal floriculture uh, honey production as well in medicine uh, plantation crops as well and fruits vegetables which of these polling states are which of the states are the highest producing states and onion potato uh, and certain fruits as well as in the certain uh, food creams and vegetables as well okay so try to know the top producing states try to know the which of the uh, the countries the top uh, producing countries of these agriculture commodities as well right so in that way you can also make a simpler way to remember is to make a simple table this is one of the techniques that you can uh, study to uh, instead of going back into so many documents and searching for it again you can uh, just refer to one table where you it's in all the necessary data on all of these, right? So, uh, so that's all for today. We have covered a few of the questions on the present scenario of agriculture, right? And please, before going, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also press the bell icon for further notifications and do share with your friends. And if you uh, like the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. And we'll be meeting for the next session. Thank you.